various jurisdictions here present. Your Excellencies, in particular, the Governor of Oyo State, Engineer Seyimakinde, Ogun State, Prince Dakpo Abiodun, of Anambra State, of Kogi State, and the Honorable the Minister of the FCT, former Governor of River State, Barrister Yesum Wike, the Life Venture. Right Honorable Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Kalu, Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Prince Latif Olasunkomi Fagbemi, SAN, distinguished members of the National Assembly here present, the President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Honorable Makiao, SAN, Your Royal Highnesses, in particular, our own, the Emir of Lafia, the Honorable Justice, Muhammad Sidi Bage Muhammad, a retired Justice of the Supreme Court and a CFR, and distinguished other Royal Highnesses. Distinguished invited guests, members of families, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press. My lords, the newest justices of the Court of Appeal, you have just taken the hold of to pledge your allegiance to the dictates of the Almighty God and the Constitution. It is a solemn pledge and commitment to good conduct in the course of your adjudication, especially as senior judicial officers of the appellate court. The number of justices that we have just sworn in today is quite unprecedented in the recent history of the Court of Appeal. The last time we recently had a large number like this was on the 28th June, Monday 2021, when 18 justices were sworn in. That in particular was preceded by that of Monday 5th of November 2012, when 12 justices were inaugurated into the court. Today's ceremony is an indication of the perilous times that we are currently in, which has resulted in an upsurge in litigation. Several unfathomable crimes are being committed in this country, aside from the usual political matters that have made litigations to go on alarming rise. No court in the land is feared of this litigation deluge, as it were. We are constantly on our toes, and the dockers are ever increasing in response to the challenges of the crime of the time. This underscores the fact that Nigeria is fast emerging as a frontline crime-infested country that we all have to urgently curtail. The enormous task of cleaning the urging stable rest squarely on your lordships. So, you must hastily fasten your belt and roll up your sleeves to face the challenges head on. In other words, you should eat the ground, speeding at a supersonic velocity and not just running. 
you must redouble your pace to catch up with the expectations of the sprawling community of litigants. As judicial officers, you have a defined mandate on earth that you must discharge with unfailed honesty and sincerity. You must give good account of yourselves to justify your elevation to the Court of Appeal. In the next couple of months, we shall be having two governorship elections in Edo and on those states. As usual, the courts will be besieged with plethora of petitions. It is our statutory duty to hear all matters that come before us and adjudicate according to the laws of the land. We must not falter and we must not tread the path of infamy. Yes, it is true that we cannot please everyone through our actions and work, but with the right application of the law and the constitution of the land, which we all have collectively pledged to uphold, we can go a long way to do those things that our conscience will be very proud of and the generality of the Nigerian citizens will equally be happy about. Every position we attain in life always avails us that unique opportunity to do something novel and impactful, especially if there was any previous act of wrongdoing or misapplication of discretion. With your Lordship's elevation to the higher bench today, you have to be very mindful of the enormous confidence the public is now reposing in you vis-a-vis -vis their expectations. Like is often said, to whom much is given, much more is expected. Your losses must not rest on your horse, as the onus now lies more heavily on you to discharge your judicial duties more dispassionately, discretionally, and transparently so, you must individually and collectively guide your loin to do more to earn lasting trust and integrity. Your conduct and disposition must tally with the yearnings and aspirations of the generality of the citizenry. I have made it known at different fora that we have been treated to an unpalatable cocktail of misleading and conflicting judgments and rulings, frivolous interlocutory orders emanating from courts of coordinate jurisdictions, which have literally attempted to make a mockery of our judicial system and flagrantly desecrate the revered temple of justice. Several cases of such abound across the length and breadth of the country. You are aware of this. This is largely an embarrassment to our jurisprudence, and we will never undo it with levity. Punitive measures must definitely be meted out to such erring judges, whatever at whatever stage. We have already activated the process of reining in such errant judges with a few to making them face the consequence of their despicable and odious conduct. As judicial officers, we have to continually remind ourselves the fact that we are not occupying our respective positions to serve ourselves, but the Nigerian masses, and the best way we can serve them is by doing what will make them feel safe in our hands, and also trust us to always deliver the right judgments that will not be tainted by sentiments, emotions, or other clandestine considerations. I congratulate your lordships for making the list and with you, and I wish you the best that you can achieve in this strategic position you now occupy. The newly appointed 12 judges of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory have just taken the oath of office. This is an exercise required of all judicial officers to align their conscience with the reality of the new status they are assuming. 
It indicates the fact that things can never remain the same in your Lordship's lives again because your lifestyle has automatically changed and your acquaintances too have to be instantaneously reviewed and reordered to align with the current reality of your new status. In the hold that you had solemnly taken, each of you said you will be faithful and you will bear through allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that as a judge of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, you will discharge your duties and perform your functions honestly to the best of your ability and faithfully in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the law. Your lordships, as individually stated that you abide by the code of conduct which is contained in the fifth schedule to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that you will not allow your personal interest to influence your official conduct or your official decisions, that you will preserve, you will protect, and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you, of course, ask God to help you. May the Lord help you. Though judicial officers are not known to possess some supernatural powers or magic ones to perform wonders, but I can assure you that the society you operate will certainly demand the impossible from you as judges. There is nothing we have not seen or heard before now, but your lordship should be ready to see and hear more strange things in the course of your adjudication. Even though I rejoice with your lordships on this very important appointment, I still sympathize with you for the many troubles, discomfort, and further assaults and uncomplimentary remarks that will be made about you by various litigants in the course of your adjudication, especially if your conscience is not directly regulating your conduct. We are all humans, no doubt, but you display the humanism in you by doing those extraordinary things that people will ordinarily say you cannot do. That is what distinguishes those with integrity and passion for success from those with unenviable pedigree and their functional moral compass. Like I always say, appointment to the bench is not an appointment to affluence, fangry, influence, or unholy acquaintance with people of unenviable character that may appear before you in different guises and make you do what is offensive to the law. You must shun unmerited wealth, dishonest disposition, and ostentatious lifestyle, born out of corrupt acquaintances. The National Judicial Council will never rest on its words in fishing out the bad eggs within the judiciary and consigning them to odium. You can only run but certainly won't have the capacity to hide from the long arm of our disciplinary apparatus. The lordships should never engage in any act that may make you regret ever being a judicial officer. I pray it does not happen anyway because the consequence will be dearer and more pungent than you may ever have imagined. The entire letters and words of the oath your lordships have just taken must be engraved on the template of your hearts and be rightly, and be rightly applied in all your adjudications. This is a bond that you should collectively etch in your hearts and allow to serve as a farai moral compass while adjudicating in all matters that come before you. Your lordships must not derail from the revered path of impartiality fairness, justice, and equity. We don't need any fortune teller to tell us that the times we are in are quite perilous and ominous. So, we seriously need judicial officers 
with the right character content that are equally calcul 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 calculative, honest, objective, dispassionate, and immensely humble to take us to the highest pedestal of image and reputation rating. Your appointments to the bench at this crucial and challenging time of our national history are not by accident, but by the divine will of the Almighty God. You should be led by wisdom and guided by your conscience on this solemn voyage of self-actualization. I congratulate your lordships for being counted first among your equals. I wish you the best of luck and sincerely hope that you will emerge as shining examples among your contemporaries that we shall all be proud of. The new page that has just been opened in your lives must contain opulent contents that will speak favorably about you in the future. I sincerely congratulate members of your family also, and I hope they are prepared to cooperate with you in all ramifications. I thank you all for listening.